The sea is powerful. Storm waves attack breakwaters with pressures of up to 140 kilograms to the square centimetre. On the coast of East Anglia, the rocks are soft and offer little resistance to the waves. Pebbles, carried by the waves, are thrown against the cliffs at high tide, so the cliffs are gradually being worn away. On the cliff top at Dunwich are a few gravestones. An old path now leads over the top of the cliffs. Hundreds of years ago, there was an important town here, but it has all disappeared as the coast was eaten away by the sea. In southwest England, the rocks are much harder but they meet large waves that have travelled across the Atlantic Ocean. If you look at the coastline of Cornwall from the air, you can see that the sea is slowly eroding these hard granite rocks leaving an uneven or indented coastline. Waves force their way into cracks in the rocks. These cracks are enlarged by the force of the water. Here a hole has been formed. Air is compressed by the waves and forces water back out of the blowhole. Constant attacks like this weaken the rocks still further. The sea hollows out caves in the cliffs. Caves on each side of a headland may meet and form an arch. This has happened in the sandstone rocks of South Devon. If the top of the arch is worn away, all that is left of the headland is a stack. After a time, even stacks may be worn down to mere stumps of rock. So, over millions of years, even hard rocks are worn down by the sea. At low tide, we can see all that remains of cliffs that stood here ages ago. Just a wave-cut rocky platform. The rocks worn away by the sea are gradually ground down smaller and smaller into sand. 
As the tides deposit the sand along the coast, beaches are formed. Some are very wide. Others are small sandy coves. A beach helps to protect the coast from further erosion. To trap sand and pebbles, breakwaters or groins are built. As sand tends to move along the coast, the level on one side of the groin is often lower than the other. In some places, beaches themselves form the coastline. At Orford Ness in East Anglia, the current of a river has forced the sea to deposit pebbles in a long spit. Because of the prevailing direction of waves and currents, the spit is still growing towards the south. Chessel Bank in southwest England is a long beach of pebbles. It joins the Isle of Portland to the mainland. The beach is wide enough to form part of a causeway leading from the island. In forming Chesil Bank, the sea has sorted the pebbles into different sizes. Near the Isle of Portland, they are large, smooth and rounded by the waves. Twenty-five kilometres to the west, the pebbles are much smaller. So, as we have seen, the sea is always at work shaping the coastline. In areas of soft rocks, such as East Anglia, much of the coast must be protected from the waves. Large sea walls are built, with groins to break up the waves and help to trap sand and pebbles. In such areas, this work is continuous, for nothing that man builds can withstand for long the steady pounding of the waves.